OK, so like I, I mentioned earlier, so we've got the three pilot centres. So we've just heard from Kirklees. Um, Cablecom we're going to hear from now. And Circo was our offender learning. And for us, the whole organisation approach to PLA is, is very much about... Um, I mean, this, this quote, I've just picked it out of um, a report, rigour and responsiveness in skills, giving the profession itself the power to raise teaching quality. So it very is a, very much about ownership, empowerment, sitting within and driving out. Um, and we do think, and I hope you, you'll sort of hear some of the, the impact of that. So I'm just going to bring up the question. Super. OK, so I just sort of pulled some questions together and we're just going to find out um, Cablecom's experience mm -hmm. about the whole organisation approach of PLA, a very different organisation, a work-based learning provider. Do you want to just tell us a little bit about Cablecom? Yes, yeah, certainly. We're a, a small private training organisation based on Teesside, um, Stockton on Tees. Some of you may have heard of it. And we specialise in telecommunications and we deal with... Um, delivering those training courses to unemployed adults, but we also have a number of apprentices. And there was a number of factors involved in actually doing the whole organization approach, um, mainly to do with the change in strategy of how we delivered to our apprentices. Um, we had a, a paper-based portfolio system that just was no longer fit for purpose. So we knew we had to do something um, our apprentices used to be based locally, so there was very little travel time. You could visit them on a regular basis. But with the best will in the world, when you have apprentices in Cornwall and Portsmouth, um, you're talking about a seven-hour drive just one way, and that's a whole day's, day's work. So it's something that we re really had to change within the organisation. The system just wasn't working that, that we were doing, and that was one of the main factors. But also, we wanted to improve communication um, and also the way we delivered the whole apprenticeship, full stop. Thank okay. You. And what's your role, Catherine, in the organisation? My role within the organisation is functional skills manager. So I have an overview of the apprenticeships. Um, we deliver the telecommunications. It's built into the IT and telecommunication apprenticeship framework. Um, and we also have some business admin administration apprenticeships as well as some subcontractors who deal with personal safety, PSS. So it's quite a varied list. So we've started off with a small number on uh, an e-portfolio system, Smart Assessor, initially, before thinking about rolling out over the whole, the whole organization. Okay, yes. super, okay. And um, Catherine, you were involved in PLA 1 as well, weren't you? Yep. Yes, One of the I projects. was. Yep. And that particular project was to do with assessment and feedback and the impact it had on learners and tutors. And again, it was centred around a whole culture shift within the organisation of changing working practices to something that really wasn't fit for purpose. So that, that particular project brought about a lot of interesting results and how much feedback, that role that played in learners' motivation and how much more confidence it, it gave them. Okay. okay. Okay, so tell us a little bit about how sort of the whole organisation approach worked this year then. So. Right. There's, we, we've developed it in two different ways. Um, the first thing that we wanted to look at was how do we get more maths embedded into the vo vocational aspect of the, the programme. And the research was based upon um, 11 learners and unemployed learners dealing with learner or with some tutors based in Leeds who are based remotely to our site in, in Stockton on Tees. And they delivered a unit called Plan, Build and Design Their Own Project. And that was almost a, a summative assessment at the end of the course, whereby the learners had to plan out how much things would cost, get the costings for things using spreadsheets, so there's a bit of, of IT in there as well. And they retook their initial assessments. So as a result, out of the 11 learners, six of those learners improved their levels, some from entry three up to level one, um, and also from level one to level two, which is great news. But there was also anecdotal evidence as well that the learners um, had given, it, 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 the whole thing had given them more confidence. They could now 
do maths with their kids, which they hadn't been able to before. They just didn't feel that they were, they were able to, to do that. So that was a really positive outcome. Okay. We've talked a lot about um, confidence, learner confidence. Yes. That's come up, come up a lot of yeah. workshops. Yeah. Yeah. And the other aspect was, I've heard about, you've all said it today, you've mentioned change within the, the organisation. And in trying to get away from an e-portfolio system, we've um, started to use what's called Smart Assessor. Some of you might know of it already. We've started off, off on a small basis. We currently have something like 11 learners on the system. So we used um, a number of focus groups to get learners' opinions about this e-portfolio and how they were accessing it. But we also asked staff how they felt about using the system and there was a real marked difference between um, the telecommunications aspect and the business administration aspect. Business administration staff felt really positive about it, um, uh, whereas telecommunications staff felt not quite so positive about it. And I think you probably have gathered from the, the difference in the evidence required for business administration, you're possibly more based in an office rather than um, out in the workplace um, ripping out cables or installing Cat5, Cat6 cable within there. So those are the main two on the, the whole organisation approach. Okay. So how many staff were involved in that? So, so the idea was, mm -hmm. so we had, there, in each of the pilot centres there was a regional advisor. So you heard from Philippa, Claire worked very closely with her in terms of you know, working out the support and how the projects would pan out. Mm -hmm. So. Um, Karen, who worked closely with mm -hmm. yourself. So how many people were trained up in-house to support others? In-house, um, as well as myself, there was five other members of staff, and they all had different roles. Um, one was our centre manager, Jeff Wilson, but he wanted to do some of the research because he wanted to look at the system, Smart Assessor system, from the point of view of quality assurance, because he's the internal verifier. So he wanted to see what he could use it for and how he could carry out interim IV as well as um, end, end IV. And also looking at how external verification visits could take place remotely rather than having to come face to face. To face. So that was an important aspect. But in addition, um, I've heard it again at another workshop this morning, was the centre manager also wants to start using the capacity of Google Docs so in conjunction with Smart Assessor, it's one way that you can give feedback to a live document and keep updating it so you can show the progress. It, it makes perfect sense when you, you think about it. But we could see a way where things are all starting to, to come in, coming together. I'm not saying they are at the moment. I think we're still at a, an early stage in the, in the development. Um, for the embedding project, the embedding maths, there was the delivery of the unit, um, plan, design, and build your own project. And there was two members of staff who were based in Leeds, plus a member of staff who was the lead researcher based up in Gateshead. And it also coincided with his um, BA module, which happened to be on action research. So several birds were killed with one stone with, yeah. with that one. So it was quite, quite a good way of doing it. And then we had our bursary project, which is through in the, the other room. And that was to looking at using interactive resources online um, to see how that affects apprentices' functional skills achievements. So you can see all three of the aspects are interlinked in some way. So to me, it was ultimately a whole organisation approach. We need to change a lot of things. And being a relatively small organisation, um, I think it's, it's probably... It's, it is quite difficult, I think, to change people's mindsets if they've been doing something all the time and then to bring about that that culture change so but i think we're getting there and as a result of what we've done we've started to develop podcasts on the e-portfolio so there's something there for learners to access and i can see that developing further as we go through um, instead of writing you know witness statements or do job write-ups i can see different things the learning being broken down into step by step chunks so it which could be more feasible for the learner to access okay okay a quick scan up there okay so have a look motivating staff to take part i think it was done through cpd which you've you've talked at and i think that was a good starting point 
through CPD, I think it needs to be really clear what the benefits are to staff and for learners as, as an organisation, and that learners are getting you know, value for, for money, and they're also getting access to really good quality resources. So it's, it's something that we wanted to show staff that you could develop innovative learning materials or ways of teaching that maybe they hadn't thought of before. And some of that is starting to come out now with looking at um, putting podcasts online yeah. and just uploading videos to look through and then give feedback on those particular aspects. Okay. You've talked quite a lot about sort of the impact, things which mm. have happened already. Yes. Sort of in terms of looking forwards, yeah. in terms of what other impact you anticipate. I think the, the biggest impact within the organisation is cutting down on the amount of travel that staff have to do. Um, if you're talking about a whole day's journey in a car, it's not particularly pleasant <laughs> to get from one end of the country to the other. But I think it's about developing staff practice. So as people progress through, it I think will in turn develop a community of practice within the assessors to try and new ways of, of working together. Um, but ultimately, I think it would probably meet the requirements of the Feltag report, as well as Ofsted, because they're looking at ways, you know, with budget shrinking all the time in, in further education, particularly and skills budget. I think it's something that organizations are w looking to work more effectively and more efficiently. Okay. And just in terms of disseminating findings, within the organisation or, or outside? Well, I'm happy to talk to anybody who's, um, who wants to know anything further on the subject, but we'll have this as a link. We're developing our website at the moment in more detail, so more of this information will be on that, that website. And obviously, if you want a copy of the poster, we can send that, that out as well. Or if you want to tie it in with a visit to the North East <laughs> and drop in to see us, you, you're very welcome. We'd be happy to share that, that information. Lovely. Okay. Just to let you know, the posters are also now live on the website as okay. well. Okay. So you can actually download right. your okay. posters yeah, right. from the website. Okay. okay. Any messages for providers you know, who are thinking about doing something similar? So that's about right. sort of, um, training up their own, what we call sort of research leads yeah. to support CPD within the organisation. I think the biggest thing is to sell it as a positive. Um, how it can aid improvement within the organisation. It can add to staff skills to make sure that um, they feel supported, but to have definite outcomes ultimately um, so that people can work towards those so they can see what their end, end target is going to be. So I think have a definite outcome as part of that. Okay. Thank you. Anything else you'd want to add? or? I don't think so at the moment. I've probably forgotten half of what I was supposed to have added, but... <laughs> okay. Any sort of questions, observations? Because but there's two... And to Philippa as well, because those are two very different contexts, you know, the, the, the large FE college, mm -hmm. smaller work-based learning provider. It's a very quick observation. I think you've smashed Feltag, haven't you? Right, okay. Yeah. That's, that's good feedback, yeah. right. You know, everything is, you, you're doing is, mm -hmm. um, you must be, was it 15% this year, is it? 10%, 15, 10% yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you're doing more than that, aren't you? But, but the key thing about that is it's being done in a meaningful way. You know, it's not there as a, as a bolt-on. You know, mm -hmm. it's intrinsic. It's, it's part of the, yeah. you know, making the whole thing work. Yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, and like um, you were saying earlier, you know, that... Um, I think it was yourself that you know that if um, if it makes more sense not to use technology, you don't use technology. But in this case, you, you're clearly using it in the right way to support. Mm. You mentioned the use of uh, podcasts. Yes. Do you have any way of finding out if the students have accessed them and recording how many hours they've done in terms of their guided learning hours for what they've. they've they've done on the functional skills? All I've got is one learner who I know who's accessed them and has returned the work within a week. Now that's what I would term as an exceptionally good, motivated apprentice. Um, other than that, I don't have any feedback. But there must be some way 
of knowing if someone's accessed something on Smart Assessor because you get some sort of notification when anybody does anything on the system. So I'm, I'm guessing that that would, that would happen. With, uh, with the college I'm currently at, we use something called uh, MyMaths and the BKSP as well, and yeah. that will also record when they access it mm -hmm. and what type of materials they've used. Yeah. So it could be a good way of recording the guided learning hours of, of the students. Yes, it, it could. Um, I have a, a dual role on that, the apprenticeship framework, where I, whereby I deliver a BTEC unit, which is entitled Interpersonal and Written Communication Skills. So that's what the podcast has been used for. But we also use BKSB, which I'm sure a lot of you will use, um, not only for initial assessment, but we use it for diagnostic assessment. And we've also pa um, purchased the package for the interactive resources. So you have an ILP created and you have all the skills checks that the learners go through and complete and get a green tick and 100% each time and a gold star as well when they've completed everything. So that way you can, you can access it. But with the smart assessor, I, I need to look at that. That might be a way of monitoring it. Um, I think it does provide a really good audit trail of what the learner is doing and then the feedback from the assessor to the learner. But I'll have a look in detail on that. I'll write that down as a development point. Thank you. And I'm sure I'm thinking um, Sandy and Emily, because you've, you've done a lot of stuff around the VLE and being out built access, monitor, etc. You have some tips. Um, anybody else? Any other sort of questions, thoughts? Okay. I'm going to invite you. I'm just going to invite you very quickly just to turn around, spot somebody you don't know very well, yeah, who you don't know at all, and just, just go sit down next to him, just for a moment, if you would. Yeah. There's somebody you don't know at all. Lovely. And we will have one three. Yeah. Super. I've not said anything in your way. You're there. <laughs> okay, just um, very quick introductions. And from what you've heard, yeah, in terms of in terms of practice led action research, whole organisation approaches. You know, is there anything that you can take from this session today back in your organisation? Okay, so go for it. Yeah. Okay, I am going to interrupt now. Okay. We're just shifting into close of this session and into exhibition space. Just before we do, those of you who are interested in accessing some of the resources, the whole organisation approach resources, which we used at Kirklees, which were adapted at um, a Cablecom and also at HMP Dovegate, you can access those from the programme website. I think most of you will be familiar with that. Um, We've got this, the CPD lead package contains uh, trainer notes, PowerPoint slides, if you want to use those to train up your own staff in-house to support practical led action research. So it's exactly what we use to train up our regional advisors who then supported many of you in the, the research projects. So they are accessible. We've also got versions which have been adapted, for example, for offender learning, because we had to go to one-hour sessions yeah, with limited technology. So we have got adapted versions as well, which are available on site. Yeah. Um, ECPD module, um, so Catherine, you mentioned that earlier. Um, so the ECPD module, again, you can use that. It's an interactive online um, module. People can work their uh, way through if they're thinking about wanting to find out more about the process of action research. Um, Pearl trees, a whole range of reading, literature, and the e-guide that I mentioned earlier, which helps people think about so it, how am I going to disseminate my findings in a multimodal way, impact measures, etc. Okay? Um, and also there's a flyer in your packs as well, just to flag. Okay, so with that, um, thank you very much. Yeah. So you found that helpful. And we're moving into exhibition space, so if you have a... 
If you have a letter B on your badges, you need to go and find your poster. Yeah? Um, and then feel free to talk about your findings. Okay, thank you.